hell. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody doing? It is Marlon Gibbons. I do hope you are all well wherever you are in the world. Um, I hope the new year has been good to you so far. And um, today's video is going to be short because I'm losing my voice, but be sure to tune in next week because I'll be doing a $500 giveaway, which I'll mention a little bit more in a bit, um, as well as I'll be doing a, a studio tour. So a lot of things have changed in the, in the past few months. And although I know a lot of you are used to seeing the room, um, I'm gonna go through all the, the specifics of the room and how I approach things and the equipment I use and tracking and mastering, all that stuff. So be sure to tune in next week, A for the giveaway, which is like so cool. I'm really excited about it, but as well as, um, as well as the studio tour. So, so I just wanted to mention that before we, we go forward. So what I want to talk today about is having music ready to go and a quantity of music, a, a, a certain amount of music. I would say no less than an album. Try to have, and when I say an album, I'm going to go with 12, 12 tracks. Having more than that is even better. Um, you don't have to have a mini catalog. You don't have to have a hundred tracks or be a mini library. Um, but having enough tracks that you could sign a deal with a catalog and have basically an album placed immediately if they like the album. Um, why this is cool is not just because it's a great negotiating tool. It's just a really great presentation when you can say, and here's all the tracks that I can license to you right now. Not tell me what you want and I'll go, I'll go write, I'll go, I'll go spend a couple days, a couple weeks writing that stuff and then I'll get back to you and hopefully you like them. If you have great stuff ready to go, you can go check this out. They like it, you review the agreement and you sign. Now here's the challenge that a lot of us face, myself included, is that you don't, we don't have time to, you know, just sit around writing a whole other album while you're not actually working to, you know, build relationships and deliver to other publishers of libraries or, or try and get into other libraries for that matter. It's easier said than done, right? But here's a tip on how to approach that. If writing an entire album is out of the question, if, if you know, 10, 12 tracks is out of the question, you don't have the time, um, and you're probably worried about what to write and to know if that's in demand or if that's really what the libraries are looking for. How about this approach? Take three or four of your absolute best tracks. What I mean, sorry, write three or four of what you consider your best effort, your best foot forward. Don't cut any corners, spend the time thinking out what you're going to write. Uh, execution, w whatever style you work in, whatever genre, mixing, um, mastering, whatever those look like to you. Uh, maybe you have a friend that is a, a mix engineer, mastering engineer. Just the point is don't cut any corners. Give it your absolute best to create three or four tracks. And adding to that, I would suggest writing not what you think is... Um, you know, in demand or, or what libraries might be looking for, but write the best that you can write, whatever that is. If you're a guitar player, then go guitar heavy, your guitar featured. Um, if you create dance music or hip hop beats, whatever it is that, whatever it is that you create, lead with that. I, I've said this a million times before, leverage your strength. Um, do what you do the best because that's what's going to show um, when prospective libraries are listening to your tracks. It's going to be what you're passionate about and what you're really good at, um, rather than trying to cater to what you think is in demand. If you're not an EDM <laughs> producer, don't try and don't try and produce that. Maybe there's opportunity down the road once you establish a relationship, but for the time being, I highly recommend you lead with your best foot forward that whatever it is that you're most proficient at. And if it's only one instrument, you don't have the ability to create full compositions, then reach out, um, collaborate with somebody, uh, try and there's, there's a million forums. Um, there's a million people just on social media, people you respect, reach out to them and ask if they'll, they'll collab with you. I can appreciate, you know, it takes weeks, maybe even months to create a full album. You might not have that time, but at the very least try and create three or four tracks that, that just hit that, 
that you feel really proud about. By doing this, you are creating so much equity in even just those three or four tracks. By approaching this with your, your strengths, you know, whether it's instrumentation or mixing or vocals, whatever the case is, by using your strength and the thing that you're passionate about, maybe it's the genre, maybe it's the instrument. If you're passionate about writing those, it's gonna show and that is where the, the value is because I guarantee you, you're not gonna create tracks as as effective and hard hitting as those, as those ones that you're passionate about if you're doing something you're just, you know, just not enjoying and it's it's just a, a, a job. It's a creative process and although there's certain, you know, um, practical components to what we're doing uh, as, as far as production music goes, there's, there's a lot of creative and e there's a lot of creativity and emotion that goes into it too. And if you can evoke that emotion from the listener, the end listener, um, or the, the library and ultimately the end listener, that's what's gonna get you placements, that's what's gonna open doors into uh, libraries. So when I say, you know, create equity, build value in having tracks, it's twofold. It's both having um, a fair number of tracks that you can present, like a portfolio almost. It's having a fair number of tracks that are one stop, ready to go, as well as having incredibly produced tracks that anyone listening can tell, yeah, that's that that just hits me, that's, that's it. I did an interview with Josh Young a few back from Atrium Music, definitely worth checking out. Josh mentions that when he hears a track, that, that he's just like, I gotta have that track. It's not so much that he runs through a checklist, it's the initial, it's, it's the feeling of that track hitting him and just like, oh, that's a great track. So that's why I'm saying, write what you love to write. Use the instruments that you love to play. Really just use your strengths to create, um, create these tracks and that's gonna show through. So quantity and quality. So that's it. I just wanted to mention that that I guess one thing which is creating value in your tracks, equity, and and optimizing that value. It's not like you just have a few tracks that are available to license. It's that you have approached producing those tracks um, with a lot of care and passion and really put everything into it. And in turn, obviously creates a much stronger, more marketable product, right? Not to sound corporate, but that's really kind of what you've done. And if you can do a whole album, awesome. If you can only do three or four, at least put everything into those three or four and don't cut corners. As I said, you know, approaching things, you know, that you're passionate about, it, I don't necessarily mean, you know, like tug on your heartstrings, sappy, sad, emotional music. I, I mean things that you're passionate about. It can be anything that, you know, the, the goosebump test, just that when you hear it is like, ah, that's it. I'm not just preaching, I'm actually taking my own advice. Um, if you look at, the, you know, I guess the month of January on my Instagram, you'll see a lot of um, roots type instruments. So, you know, mandolin, dobro, cello, fiddle, um, you know, a lot, a lot of that organic roots, sometimes gritty kind of um, sound. And it's not just because I think that that's uh, marketable or there's a place for it in the market, which, which I do, but it's because that's, really what I was raised on and that's what I love to write. So that's the foot I'm putting forward. And I would recommend if it's EDM, dance, hip hop, jazz, orchestral, whatever, if that's your thing, then lead with that. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to hit subscribe, follow me on social media. Next week, $500 giveaway. I'll announce the details then. Hey, future me here. I thought I should just clarify. The $500 is a $500 credit with a really, really cool brand. I'm super excited. I'll give all the details next week, so don't forget to tune in then. Uh, but as well, I'm gonna do a studio tour of what I got going on, what I use, my approach, all that kind of fun stuff. Come hang out again next week. Cheers, my friends. Hey, future me again. You guys rock.